Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Frequency. So I kind of brought up this comparison before about comparing this to another sh show called Awake. You know, it was a very short-lived show. But I kind of got reminded of it again in this episode because of the way they designed it. Where it's like when she's remembering both... Uh, well, I'm going to start referring to as the original timeline where her dad died. That's going to be timeline one for now one. And timeline two is the current timeline where her dad is, had lived. So, timeline one is like um, filmed with a certain filter over it. Just like uh, where you have timeline two being kind of more bright and vibrant. Where you have timeline one being kind of more dark and um, got like a blue kind of uh, filtering over it. So, that's kind of interesting to me because that's kind of how Awake kind of did the same thing too with its, you know, the different um, worlds like, oh, his son lived in one world and his wife lived in the other one type of situation. So it's kind of like just to give you a way of kind of separating them, not just, you know, give you a more visual way of separating the two story um, timelines. Now, this episode was very interesting because it, it, that played a big part in it because you know, I was bringing it up before. It's going like, you know, it's so far it's only been used one time necessarily, like her memory of the original timeline timeline one versus like her memories of timeline two it's popping up here and there in small um ways but this time it was a heavy part of a case essentially there was a guy that remy remy uh in this in timeline two with her dad she arrested this guy who basically killed his girlfriend he was abusive to his girlfriend and he killed her got locked up for like eight years got out and then was immediately like killed like two after two hours after getting out. Now, what makes this very interesting is in timeline one, because Remy remembers the other timeline as well, is that back in 08, when you know it, her who her partner at the time, what well not her partner, her uh, training officer was Stan, whereas in timeline two, her training officer was her dad, which led to an interesting thing. But I'll I'll get to that soon enough. It, but with Stan as her uh, training officer, they ended up finding. Well, obviously, the similar situation of like her being dead, but in that um, reality, the uh, guy never got arrested because when Stan and Raimi found him, he was already dead. Interestingly enough, he died the same way. Eight years apart in different realities, he died the same way, two shots to the back of the head. I mean, because what you end up finding out, though, is the reason the same person that killed him in both realities was the girlfriend's dad. Because essentially, the girlfriend's dad was a drug dealer, and the reason why this guy knew his daughter in the first place is because he kind of introduced him because the guy, uh, her boyfriend, worked for her dad, so that's how they kind of came together. So, in this timeline, the reason why it didn't happen is because Frank and Raimi arrested him. In that other timeline, the dad ended up tracking him down and killing him, which he did in this timeline too, but it's like the reason why that there was like that eight year period is because he was locked up the entire time. Because he made it seem like, oh, I wasn't gonna go after him because your dad stopped me from doing it. And it's like, no, because it's like, oh, he got eight years. But it's like I mean, it was very interesting because Raimi was able to convince the wife to kind of turn on him because it's like, hey, he, your daughter is literally dead because your husband's business got her involved with a man that she wouldn't have met otherwise. The only reason why she met him was because of your husband's business. So, But that's just the case in itself <clears throat> because there's a much bigger story going on here, uh, the overall story, and that's dealing with Stan. Now, back in the original timeline, how timeline one, how Raimi remembers it is the fact that it's joined up with Stan. She kept seeing like different things, like seeing him handing off drugs and stuff like that. At the time, she didn't really think much of it because, you know, Stan's got that... Like, um, everyone looks at him and is like, yo, Stan, Stan's the man, he's the top dog, he's a great cop, so everyone looks up to him and respects him. She was a rookie at the time, so she didn't really want to second guess him or anything. I guess it's also because, being in the position that she was, because in that timeline, it's like her dad was labeled a dirty cop. You even had that bastard Stan being like, yo, your dad was a good cop at one point, but you know, he just, uh... He just lost his way. I'm like, oh, you piece of sh you piece of feel. And it's so depressing to actually see Raimi in that way. Because you look at the other timeline, you know, her dad's busting her chops a little bit. They even got her dad's old badge and gave it, you know, Satch got it uh, kind of brought back so that she could use it as her badge. And like in timeline two, and it's like, oh, man, it's so cool. I get to have dad's badge and he's my T um, T.O. It's a little weird and awkward. But at the same time, it's pretty awesome. But... 
in timeline one, what ended up happening was like Satch offered her that badge and she turned it down just because, you know, her dad's a dirty cop and, you know, and then even Stan was like, oh, yeah, but, you know, people say this and that about your dad. She's like, I understand what both of you are trying to say, but it's like, you know, she, it's sad to see that side of her because she had such belief back then that her dad was a bad guy, but now she knows the truth, which is what pushes her so hard in this episode. She's like, we got to prove that Stan's dirty, but Satch isn't kind of backing her on it. And she's just like, why can't you see? I mean, it's frustrating. She's got the knowledge. All the pieces to the puzzle are lined up there, but she can't really tell anyone about it. Like, oh, there's this alternate timeline where Stan did this and that. You know, they'll lock her up. They'll already, you know, Satch already thinks she's a little crazy because of all the way she acts around about certain things. I mean, because she kept lying and being like, oh, I have this hunch about things. It's like because she remembered the alternate timeline, she... She has a very different perspective, and like a, like I said, that premise. I know I keep bringing it up, but that's what made Awake a very interesting show to me. Was that premise of like balancing both time, both worlds, and it's kind of like oh, using that to, as your advantage of solving cases. And it seems like that's going to be a thing in this um, show as well. I mean, like I said, this is like the first episode. It was like a really, really big thing. So I'm very curious. Um, <clears throat> to see if that will continue to be a thing I mean I, it seems like maybe when it's like main storyline stuff is when it really kicks in uh, especially in this whole stand situation but um, because originally the guy got arrested like um, I think guy, the dad's name was Nikki the drug dealer he originally got arrested way back when now the charges should have been gotten him about roughly 15 years because of all you know large amount of drugs he had on him but he only short served like a short amount of time if not served any at all because stan flipped him and turned him into his ci and the, and the files were kind of um closed off and even stan asked Raimi in present days like yo so how'd you figure all that out? It's like the only way you could have known is if you got that file, which was like, okay, he knows that she got that file, but that file got destroyed 20 years ago, so how does she have it? Well, you know, Frank doing the new thing of like, hey, I'm hiding evidence here, you go track it down present day, and it's like, oh, there it is, here's this file. So it's like, it's like I said, you gotta, you, you gotta take that to your, you gotta use that to your advantage, that, um whole situation what I would really appreciate I mean it makes you wonder how would things change like if you take for example if you had Frank go back and take that file now you know the case is solved that would probably change everything because it's like that case will vanish from exist from no longer exist and so it'll be like oh it never existed in this present time so that means like everything that she did will be unraveled so she has to keep the case uh well yeah the case file and everything the um folder so she'll have to keep it and keep it hidden because it's like most likely Stan's probably won't come after I mean at this point in time whether he will or not I don't know because Nikki hasn't rolled on Stan yet but it's only a matter of time but once again Satch is still protecting him and she's like you know because she's coming at it from the perspective of like hey she's like I already know you're a dirty cop obviously my memories already show that but it's like you know she was a rookie at the time like I said she didn't want to speak up because it's like yo Stan's like I said the guy so it's like who is she to kind of question his methods about things Plus, I guess that, you know, it's kind of one of the things context clues. It's like at the time, she thought things were weird, but it's like she really couldn't piece the puzzle together until like she has this other timeline to look at to be like, no, that was wrong. Especially knowing that he tried to set up her dad and everything. So it just makes it clear in her head, like Stan's a bad guy. What makes things very interesting is when we find out, it's like, oh, Satch is a part of this too. Which, I, I said it from the beginning, I was like, yo, I'm suspicious of Makai Pfeiffer. It's like, you know, now it seems like, okay, he's not um, Nightingale at the very least, but it is, seems like he is caught up in this. What it does break, break the question of is, was he a part of this always? Like, way back when Frank was undercover and everything, was he part of that too? Did he know what was going on? Obviously, maybe at the time he didn't know what was going to go down with Frank, and he didn't agree with it or whatever. I mean, but luckily it worked out. Maybe that's why he decided to stay by Remy's side, because it's like, oh, he had to make up for it, because he was a part of this whole situation so that's why he stick, stuck by Raimi was kind of like her father in the original time in timeline one or could it be because they changed things because Frank is still alive Satch ended up getting brought into it then maybe that's what this is because he is covering for Stan because Stan is like yo put your girl in line he's like I can't she's a solid one once she gets the bone she's going to keep following it which <clears throat> I brought it up before in present day timeline, you know, in timeline two, 
Frank ended up dying in a car accident. I already said it. We haven't got that much of a look at, but you can tell that wasn't an accident. I already know. So it's like Stan was behind it. Maybe at that point is when Satch got involved. Maybe then it's like, oh man, I found out you're behind my partner's death and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I could go either way. I'm probably my brain's kind of leaning a little bit, just a tiny bit more to the fact is that he was with them the entire time. So that, to me, that pushes it even more as to why he would work, keep so close to Raimi. Like, cause him and Raimi, I feel like don't have that close of a relationship in timeline two. You know, mainly because her dad was there. She didn't need a substitute dad. She had Frank, which it seems like her and Satch still got close and whatever, cause that was like her dad's partner as well as his best. friend friends so in that regards it kind of makes sense too so I, I don't know I'm very curious to like know where that all started like was that from the beginning or is that like a timeline change I'm curious and a final note in the episode is just kind of like kind of very sad it's just the whole um Julie and Frank situation it's like you know you try so hard like Frank is legitimately trying hard because he's trying to get back his family he's like he's been gone for two years and he legitimately probably thought he could pick up right where he left off but things have changed he's changed his wife's changed you know Ramey's changed so it's not easy to kind of meld together because it's like you know he, he in his mind is like oh we need to find that common ground again he wanted to give her a space take things slow but then he saw that you know that guy even went as far as having Satch look up his plates and stuff like that because it's like, you know, this is a guy that's mooching in on his territory. It's like, yo, like, I'm trying to work things on my family. And it's like, oh, this guy's getting close to my wife. But she had to explain to him. It's like, yo, you got it wrong because they were just studying everything because he kind of flew off the handle. It's like, it's understandable why he'd be jealous. It's because like, he's afraid of losing everything. It's like, he's got everything within his grasp, but it just seems like it's constantly slipping through his hands like sand. So it's kind of understandable why he would be jealous. And it, you know, Rain, I mean, Julie's like, it's not just that. Just the fact is that he's different, you know, that there's a darkness about him, that she doesn't want it to affect Raimi. And she's just like, I hope you get help. So it's kind of, it's sad that she's basically saying, let's split up. Um, which she hasn't, you know, it happened like right at the end of the episode. So I'm very curious to find out like what Raimi has to say about it. Will he even tell her? I mean, because like her, it's going to be interesting, like, because we don't really get to see, like, it's it, it's not going to be something, like, because Raimi doesn't really recognize the differences between the timelines until she really thinks about it. Because it's like, not everything hits her all at once. She has to sit there and think about it. And then, the, like, once she thinks about the memory, it kind of comes to her. as like, oh, that's what happened. So, you know, all the changes, whatever's going to happen with Frank, all that's already happened in her current timeline. So it's not like it's always constantly changing. What's changing, I think, is... I don't know. My trying, what I'm trying to understand is, is it changing before her eyes? Which, n never mind, now that I'm thinking about it. Because I was thinking, like, everything's already set in stone. And it's just, like, it's changing along the way with Frank before Raimi is set in stone. But it's like, no, it's not. It's always changing, too. So maybe her memories are going to change with it, too. Or were they already like that? I don't know. Because... Because what I'm curious about is the Frank from her memories, the one like that was the dad that was there being a hard ass for her. It's like, she's like, oh, should I be a cop or not? And he's like, that's not up to me. That's up to you. To do. I mean, you have to do it. You have to see this through. Could that be because it's Frank knowing what he's known with Raimi? Like, that the fact is that Frank back in 96 was talking to Raimi from 2016. So is he following that path to a certain degree? Like, you know, how does that work? Did, you know, were they still in contact that entire time? Or was it just like if something happened so Frank ended up losing contact with her? Maybe like if they don't solve Julie's murder, it ruins everything. And so the timeline becomes permanent. And so they end up losing contact with each other. So 2016 Raimi can't talk to 96 Frank. So he has to just go on living the rest of his life with the knowledge he's accumulated from 2016 Raimi. And had to live the rest of his life like that. That'd be kind of interesting to see if that was how that worked out. Because like you, because it just seems like... Frank is more so just living his life, not like, oh, taking any advice from a future or Raimi or anything, you know? You know what I mean? So it seems like maybe at some point during the timeline, if they don't stop the whole Nightingale thing, it sets the timeline in place. And maybe at some point they ended up losing contact. That's why that is. Because... <clears throat> As we know, there were points, obviously, where he was investigating the murder. And it's like, oh, maybe those were moments where it's kind of like... Well, not necessarily the murder, but her disappearance. So maybe that was still kind of like, hey, him in contact with Raimi, who was also helping him at the time. I don't know. It's very confusing. It'd be interesting to see 
where that kind of all plays out. It's just, like I said, it's just sad. Like, Frank is doing everything he can to get his family back, to make sure Julie's safe. You know, also helping out Raimi, you know, just ensure that her mom lives. It's, it's just so much that kind of, like, I feel like a lot of it, like, Frank tends to kind of hold on his own. It's like, because even with Raimi, he doesn't really open up about everything that's, I mean, because she's literally the only person he can talk to about this. He can't talk to anyone else about it because everyone's just going to think he's crazy. He already made that mistake once with Julia, and that just kind of didn't work out, so he's not about to go down that path again. So it's like, it'd be kind of interesting to see him kind of open up a little bit more to Raimi about everything. So it just kind of, they kind of talk to her because he needs somebody to talk to her. They both do because it's like, if they don't, they're just all alone in this. And that's that's a lot for one person to carry. I mean, at least that's how I see it. So, But overall, very good episode. And I'm just very interested to see where things progress from here. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good bye.